Hi guys and welcome to Rufus and Doofus. Chico here. <clears throat> Rufus is at home resting and I'll tell you a little story about him in our next video, not this one. Uh, today, as you can see, I'm over at the RV and uh, I'm doing something that I didn't think I was going to be doing, but uh, it needs to be done. Um, as you guys know, um, I've had problems with a fuel issue on this RV uh, since the beginning. And what happened is I got involved with a mechanic named Ulf who really messed things up. He destroyed the brand new fuel pump that I gave him to put in um, and I'm very upset about that. But to make a long story short, a very nice man, Jeff, great mechanic, excellent mechanic who's been helping me out, uh, realized there was a problem with the, with the fuel pump after I talked to him. And uh, he dropped the gas tank and he attempted to repair the uh, fuel pump. And uh, I think he put his best efforts into it, and it does work. It pumps gas. It does, you know, the job. But you guys also know that I'm a little bit anal, and I've been changing uh, uh, a lot of things in the RV, putting new components in and such. And the last two things that I did was a new coil pack and a new distributor, uh, which basically makes the whole ignition system brand new right now. Plug wires are new, obviously the cap and rotor and the uh, um, all of the stuff, the coil pack inside of the distributor, everything brand new, bushings, everything. So that's all new, and the engine runs beautifully. Well. A lot of you guys saw the video uh, when we put in that repaired fuel pump and you said, oh man, you should have put a new sending unit in, don't trust it, this, that, and the other thing. Well, you know, sometimes when you hear people say something and, and you listen, you know, you do, and deep down inside, I think myself and also Jeff would have wished that we had a nice, you know, brand new fuel pump or sending unit to, to stick in there so that we wouldn't have to look in there again. Um, Jeff's a busy guy, you know, and the, the, uh, the RV is 36 foot long and takes up a lot of room in his shop. So it wasn't like I was going to order up a, a, a sending unit and have it there in 24 hours. No way. It was going to be more like three or four or five or six days because, you know, weekends and such. And it's always, uh, weekends always work against you when you got a project. So we went ahead and put that fuel pump in there. Well, I got to tell you, from the time it was in there to the time I was working on that distributor and getting everything all nice, nice, it just kept eating at me and eating at me. And I said, you know what? I'm going to take that freaking old, crappy, destroyed fuel pump that Ulf destroyed, and I'm going to replace it with a brand new, spanking new um, sending unit from Motorcraft. So that's where I'm at. Now, a couple of challenges that I had to overcome. You can see where I'm working, all right? There's all kinds of rodents and snakes and reptiles and everything else that wants to crawl up your crotch and bite you where you don't want to be bit. So um, I had to come up with a way to do this job so that I could do it as one person. And I had to come up with a way that didn't involve heavy floor jacks on this, this terrain, which is muddy and crappy. And what I came up with uh, and also it had to be a smooth letdown because I got to tell you the gas tank is not empty I do not have a siphon. I do not have any tanks to put the gas in and uh, You know, I wasn't gonna Go through that hassle of trying to pour it in my truck. That's full and I'm not going to give the gas away too expensive of a commodity so what I came up with is I bought myself two heavy-duty ratcheting tie downs over at Home Depot, less than $10 a piece. I think they were $9.98. They're heavy duty. When I mean heavy duty, these things are, are very heavy duty. Lots of leverage on the strap. And I said, hmm, what if I take one and put it on each end of the tank and hook it onto the frame? Well, guess what? That's what I did. And I was going to video the whole thing when I was putting the strap in. But you know what? Putting the strap in, it's not important because your rig is going to be different than my rig. What I can tell you is this application could probably be used um, on any type of vehicle, but it's especially good for a large truck 
or an RV. If you have an RV, this is the way to let your tank down, guys. I mean, no jacks involved, much more stable, probably safer, and turns it into a one-man job with a lot of control because the uh, ratcheting straps only move like an eighth of an inch at a time or a half inch. So I want to show you what I've done, and from here on, I'll try and film it so you guys can, can see uh, how it's done. All right, don't go away. Let's crawl under the RV together. Yes, let's go see if there's fire ants and snakes and toads and every other goddamn thing that runs around here in Florida. All right, we'll see you under the RV. All right, guys, here we are under the RV. And if you're here with me and you're watching this video, you're probably anticipating pulling down your fuel tank um, or whatever, or you're just curious and want to see some guy struggle. That's the only two reasons you'd be here. So let me show you what I've got. That's the forward part of the tank, and you can see that the strap is hooked on to a part of the frame rail, and it goes underneath the tank and goes on to the other side. And you can see that that's quite a large ratcheting tie down there. So that's the one that's on the forward part of the tank. The bolts and the, and the, the regular straps that hold the tank up, the metal ones, are completely off. So, there's another angle that you can see. Sorry about the shakiness on the camera, but right now that's the best I can do. Okay, and then, let me give you another view. Here is the rear of the tank with the strap under it, sitting at an angle because I didn't pull down the front as far as the back, all right? And you can see that the strap is doing a nice job holding it out, uh, uh, down, uh, up, or whatever. Yeah, I got to tell you something. There's about 20 gallons of fuel in there. And um, if you do it with a jack, that fuel's going to slosh around and make handling the tank very, very difficult. The straps didn't make it slosh around, and they can hold quite a bit of weight. Would I recommend doing this with a full tank of gas? No. Would I recommend you siphon some out or run it out or whatever you got to do? Yes. The less gas in it, the easier it's going to be. But in my, my um, situation... This is the way I had to do it. So uh, let me move forward. Let me just show you where the fuel uh, sending unit is mounted on the tank, and we'll go from there. Alrighty. There's the fuel sending unit, as you can see. Okay, and I have to get that out of there. Uh, I'm going to have to lower the tank slightly more to get that out of there. And that'll allow me to get the new one right in. I could probably, if I really had to, get the new one in without going further down but hey why struggle this is working out real well i'm just going to lower it another couple of inches and i'll have much better access so enough of me yapping let me get back to work before something crawls up my pants and bites me on the snake i mean something crawls a snake crawls up my pants and bites me on the leg i think i got my words messed up there so here we go well here i am again and uh I got all the, the little screws out of the top of the fuel pump, and I'm going to tell you, there's a gaggle of them in there for you guys that don't know. When you order your new pump, you'll, you'll see what I mean. There's a ton of screws up there, and they're a pain in the neck to get at. If I had a little air ratchet, might have been a lot easier, but I did it by hand, trying to do um, the job like I'd have to do it on the road if I ever had to do it, you know, and if you guys ever had to do it on the road, which I hope never happens. So let me show you what we got. All right, I got the uh, fuel line to the, to the generator off, and I've got the clips off on the uh, fuel lines to the engine and the return. Uh, but what I have to do is I have to get the special tool to pull the fuel line completely off, uh, which I have. But I don't want to pull the fuel pump out right now because, with my luck, some critter will get in yeah, there. I'll have a squirrel stoppage or a lizard or some damn thing. Uh, blocking everything up so we're not going to do that we're just going to wait until the new pump comes which should be by the end of today and if that happens i'll see you all here again tomorrow for part two the installation of the fuel pump and putting the tank back up into the belly of the rv so i hope you enjoyed today's video and if you did give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe you don't see this stuff on other channels, you know. <laughs>
All right. Later. Bye.